In today's tech video, we are going to review these guys right here. This is the GoTrax electric scooter. I got the version one and the version two. So we're gonna dive into the specifics of each one, tell what the differences are, and see if this gives my thumbs up recommendation. That's today's tech video. Before we begin, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so you can get notified for future videos. I'd love to have you back in the next one. Hey guys, Juan here. Thanks for stopping by my channel and checking out this video. So today we're going to dive into the specifics of these electric scooters, these fun, uh, really cool electric scooters that my family has enjoyed for a few months now. And we're going to talk about the specifics of these two. Now we got the two different models here. We got the version one and then over here we got the version two. And I'm also going to show you some footage of the version three, the, the brand new version. Okay, so this is the V1 right here. This is a V2. As you can tell just by looking at it at first glance, there's not a whole lot of difference in the two. Uh, just some minor details. But we'll talk about some of the things that they both have in common. First one is those tires right there. They got eight and a half inch tires uh, that do have like a little inner tube on there. Uh, it is kind of a pain in the neck though whenever you do need to put some new air in them. GoTrax does send you a little tube that like kind of an adapter that you can take and put on here. All right, so right here, as you can tell, that's kind of hard to get to. Uh, so whenever this front tire gets low on air, it can be a real pain in the butt to try and put some new air in that tire. So you have to use the adapter that it comes with in order to even fit your air nozzle on there to blow up the tire. Now both of these scooters come with a 250 watt motor, uh, making it a pretty powerful scooter to get you up hills and uh, take you in long distances. Both of these scooters will top out at a speed of 15.5 miles an hour. They do hold a maximum of 220 pounds. That's what it says on the label and the packaging. But I have had people who weigh more than that get on these scooters and ride them just fine. Since it does have a 36 volt battery, the GXL travels up to about nine to 12 miles before you have to start to recharge it again. And whenever you do have to recharge it, it takes about four hours to recharge the batteries. Now height from the bottom, all the way up to the top there is about 38 inches. So that kind of gives you some sizing on whether it would fit you or not. Both scooters have this kickstand you can kick down just like this. All right, so it does have a portable design on this. The frame folds down and it locks in for easy storage, making it better for uh, you know commuting from place to place. Maybe you can throw it in the back of your car or you know, if you just need to park it somewhere and maybe hang it on a wall or take it. When it folds down like this, it makes it very portable. Okay, so now for some of the subtle differences, this one here that I'm pointing at, this is the V1. Now the V1 came with these two levers here. This is a brake that you got up here. This is your gas right here. And then it also had a foot brake right there. Now on the V2, the V2 had a handbrake that comes up like this. And it also came with a, a bell in case you need to let people know that you were coming their way. There was no foot brake on the V2. Uh, pretty much that's the only real differences between the two when it comes to the V1 and the V2. Okay, so when you are charging the scooter, you just kind of flip this thing down here and then you'll plug your charger cord right into there to start charging it. And like I mentioned before, it takes about four hours to get these guys fully charged. Okay, so here is the battery for this thing. So that way you guys can take a, a look at it here. You just take this end right here and that's what you plug into the scooter. And then the other end of the cord goes into the wall. And then it plugs in right there. Okay, now to get this thing turned on, all you do is it's got one button. It's almost kind of like an old iPhone where you just have one button that controls that. You hold down on that button and it comes on. Now it does have four bars whenever you have a full charge. I have three because we rode it already a little bit but it says zero miles per hour it tells you how fast you're going uh, like i said it before it gets up to about 15 miles per hour on a max speed i guess it all depends on your weight 
and you know the terrain if you're going uphill you're definitely not going to get 15 miles an hour if you're a little bit heavier you're not going to get 15 miles an hour but um, yeah that's right there is what it where it tells you now if you hold down on this button again longer it flashes number two so now this is at level two speed so it's got level one and then level two of course level two is faster than level one so maybe if you're new at this you're going to probably want to ride for a, on a level one for a little while and then to shut it off all you do is hold down on it for about three seconds and then it turns off just like that pretty simple okay so now you might think oh 15 miles an hour i want one that's faster <laughs> Let me tell you, 15 miles an hour is plenty fast. I wrecked on one of these things and it hurt uh, really bad. So after you wreck, you kind of get a little bit gun shy and then you don't want to go as fast. So I find myself wanting to slow down a little bit more after I've wrecked. But 15 miles an hour is a pretty good speed for these things. Especially if you're you know, going with others and you're you know, kind of side by side, especially with like a, a terrain like this that's kind of a narrow field, um, that's plenty enough fast. Something else to note here is that whenever you do turn this on, if you press on it once, there's a little light icon that comes on there. So that way if you're riding at nighttime, you have a headlight that shines upon the, you know, wherever you're driving to. And then to turn that back off, all you do is tap on it or push on it again, just like that. And then that light goes off. Okay, so with the version 2, you do have this like bicycle handbrake here. The version one, you've got this one here. And I guess it's based on preference from some of the people that have ridden these um, in my family. I kind of prefer the version one's handbrake here. Now my kids, they kind of prefer the, the handbrake like this. So I guess it's, that's just based on preference on which one you like. Okay, so after owning these for about six months, would I recommend them? I totally would. I give it a thumbs up. They're pretty fun and they are at a pretty budget price because they got some out there that can rack you up to about $1,500, $1,200, somewhere around that price range. These here are the more budget kind. And if you're not somebody that's going to be using it on an everyday basis, if you're somebody that's just going to use it for fun, kind of like we do as a family, then these are the ones that you kind of want to get. So I give it a thumbs up on this. Okay, they do have that disc braking there. So whenever you press on the handle here, you'll see it lock there. But yeah, we haven't had any kind of issues with the brakes on these. They have uh, done very well at stopping us whenever we needed to stop for an abrupt stop or if we needed to do a gradual slowdown. Okay, and let me just go ahead and say I do not work for GoTrax. They did not send me these. This is just my honest review of an honest consumer of buying these things and giving my uh, feedback on it. So this is an honest review. Okay, and if you are interested in getting these scooters, I will have links in the description down below of where you can buy it. Well, thanks for watching this video, guys. Hopefully this was helpful to you in deciding if these are the scooters for you. If you found this video helpful, make sure you throw a thumbs up on it. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I make tech videos all the time, and I would love to have you back in the next one. So until then, get out there and be creative.